Hi guys, it's March 30, which means it's time for a new Skube method. I think it's pretty clear at this point that all the fastest Skube solvers solve with some variation of Sarah's Advanced, where you solve one layer and then you solve all of the rest with one algorithm. And I think there's like 300 algorithms. And I will admit that that's the most speed optimal method there is, but I have a I solve with a very different method, and I've been doing it since 2013. And that was back before skew was official, so the fastest people were averaging like six. So I thought my method could compete with all the others. Now, I don't think that's possible. I averaged six flat with this in 2018, which isn't that good. But I thought I'd share it with you guys anyway, because I thought it's kind of interesting and you might like to know. So let's just get started. What is my method? Well, do you know that meme that Colorful Pockets has been spreading? about half a skewb? This is that meme in real life. And why is that? That's because my method has two steps. Step one is solve half of a skewb. Step two is solve the other half. So first of all, what is half a skewb? Well, whenever you make any turn on the skewb, it, di it divides the skewb exactly in half volume wise. So let's just call any chunk that turns together like this half. So this chunk up here is half of a skew, and this chunk down here is also half. Okay, here's the exact two steps of my method, which I call half and half. Step one, intuitively solve half of a skew minus one corner. Step two, use one algorithm to solve that corner plus the entire other half of the skew. That might make step two sound daunting, but I can explain why it's actually not so daunting. For reasons I'll explain later, there's actually only 30 something last half plus corner algorithms for step two. And most of them are inverses or mirrors of the other. So you really only have to learn, I think like 12 or maybe 16. It was really fast for me, so it can't be that high. Okay, so before I just do a walkthrough solve of the entire process, let me show you what you're going for. So half of a skew looks like this, where what I'm turning on top is entirely solved except for one corner. So finishing step one will get you here. And the finishing step two looks at this half of the skew plus the corner and solves all of it with one algorithm. By the way, the algorithm that solves this case, where we have a center attached to a corner on the top and headlights here that are the same color as these two, and then the corner on our first half is not twisted correctly, the algorithm is only six moves. And these are those six moves. And that will solve the second half and twist the corner correctly. And now it's just an AUF away from being solved. Got it? Good. Okay, so then let's, let's get started. So I'm going to scramble it and then do step one, which is to solve half of a skew minus a corner. How do you do that? Well, I like to build it up incrementally. So I start by building a chunk that consists of two adjacent centers and the two corners between them. So there's four pieces in total, all solved relative to each other. And that's my first goal. And that's pretty easy to do. It takes like one, two or three moves. And the way I find that is by looking for centers where corners are already attached to them, like this blue center and this corner attached to it. That's really helpful because if you find two of those that have similar colors, then it's very easy. So like here's a blue chunk with a yellow part of it. And here's a yellow chunk with a blue part of it which means that it's like two moves to bring them both together. And then there you go. Here's four pieces that builds our chunk. Now this chunk is not half of a skew yet, because if you look at the pieces that move together, there's seven in a half. There's three centers and there's four corners. That means that whenever we solve a chunk of four pieces like this, we have to solve three more in this bow tie like shape to finish off the half. However, I said we only have to solve half minus a corner, right? So we actually can forget about one corner and all we need is a center and the corner next to it. And then we'll have half of a skew minus a corner. When you have your chunk here and are building your extension to the side of it, you can only make moves that don't break up the original chunk. And what that means is if you hold on the left, you can turn this face or you can turn this face. And these are the only two moves you can make. But even with just those two moves, it's possible to build any extension you want. So you actually still have enough freedom to finish step one 
but that's just a reminder. Do not break up the chunk once you've got it. When you have a chunk of four pieces like this, there are two possible centers you could extend with, on the left or on the right. In this case, we could either try to solve the red center like that, or the orange one like that. After that, because you only have to solve one of the two corners next to that center, there's another two choices you've got. So that totals four possible extensions from this chunk to finish off step one. In this case, what are those four choices? Well, we could solve the red-blue pair in the back left, like that. We could do the red-yellow pair in the front left, like that. We could also do the orange-blue pair in the back right, like this, or we could do the orange yellow pair in the front right, like that. And all you gotta do when you have your chunk is pick which of those four options is the easiest, do that single pair extension, and you're done with step one. So in this case, doing that is one move to solve the orange yellow pair in the front right, and then we're done. Then we have this case, which is um, a five corner twist, like that. Here's another example. All I have to do is um, pair up that orange center with a corner, which it already is in this case, and then like bring it up here and put it right next to the other one. And we've got half of a skew minus a corner like that. And that finishes step one. On to step two. But before we get to step two, I want to point something out. It kind of blew my mind when I first realized it, and it makes this method a lot easier. So it turns out the corners of a cube move in sets of four. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at any corner like this one, and look at the three corners diagonal to it, like the ones I'm touching right now, these four actually stay in this rigid configuration relative to each other and don't move. Any possible turn of the skew just rotates um, the corners, but position-wise, uh, they stay rigid. Uh, and that's actually a really helpful fact. Oh, and by the way, that's true for the other four corners too. So there's two sets of four corners that are rigid. So what that means is if you have half of a skew minus a corner, you have these two corners solved entirely, right? And the other two corners of that set of four, which are here and here, they are rigid compared to these two, which means that position-wise, these two corners, without you even trying, will be solved position-wise. So actually, when you solve your half minus a corner, even without paying attention, you will solve this corner's position correctly but perhaps with the wrong orientation. And you can in fact see that this corner is in the right spot, and if you were just to twist it like this way, it would be solved. What that means is, there's actually only three possible states for how uh, the last corner could end up. Because it's always in the correct position, there's only three possible orientations. There's it being solved, like this, which we could call zero, and then you have a set of algorithms for the second half to solve. Or you could have it rotated clockwise, and when it's rotated clockwise, you just keep track of that in your mind, and then you have a different set of algorithms that will solve the last half plus that corner. And then you also have when it's rotated counterclockwise, like this, and then there's a third set of algorithms you solve for this, the last half in the corner. So you can see there's three subsets of algorithms for last half a plus corner, and all they really do is just twist this as you're solving the rest. Here are all the algorithms I use. If you want a better view of them, go to the description for a link. It turns out that on this chart, the size of each box corresponds to how likely that case is to appear. So if you see like double sledge having a really large box, that, that's because the algorithm double sledge is a very common case, which is good. And the second thing is I only know about 70% of these cases and the other 30% I have to two look. But I mean, you can figure out how to two look something just like do a case that you do know that takes you into a simpler case and then do that. It's pretty self-explanatory. So I guess it's time to dive into step two now. 
What I do is I hold it like this so that the unsolved corner is in the lower front left. And then it's easy to see how all the other pieces look. And most of the time, there's one of the three centers that has a corner attached to it like this. And using that and the other two pieces of the same color, you get this shape. So this case we've got here, where the pieces look like that, is actually exactly this case right here, where the red pieces look like the same thing. And there's the six moves we need to do to solve it. So let's just do them. And after doing that, the second half will be solved relative to itself. The first half will be solved relative to itself with that unsolved corner finally twisting into place. And then it's just an AUF to fix it. And then the whole cube is solved. That's it for my method. So now I'll show you a 4.92 average of 12 cube solves I got a few months ago. Just to show you that it's somewhat fast. Not really fast, but it can do something. Um, now this average of 12 had two skips in it, and by a skip, I mean when you solve the first half, the second half is already done. And there's a 1 in 81 chance of a skip like that. So yeah, I got pretty lucky. But I don't think that delegitimizes this average because I also messed up quite a few times. I do think that if I could finger trick all the algs correctly, and recognize them better too, sub 5 global is definitely possible. But I just don't want to put in the work anymore. So here's some final thoughts of this method. What was my motivation for doing all of this? Well, in 2013, I realized how powerful AUFs are for things like CFOPs, OLL, and PLL, because what that means is if you ever get a case rotated at a different angle, it only takes you one or two moves of the U layer to solve it with the same exact algorithm you learned before. So like technically you could say there's 200 something OLLs, but Three quarters of them you can rotate into other cases you already know, um, so it makes it easier. Unfortunately, with the skew, if you solve one layer, then there aren't really any faces that you could AUF, so um, there's only one possible rotation you can do to solve each case, and you lose that advantage of the AUF. So I tried to devise a method where I could bring the AUFs back. Oh, and also AUFs, like in this method especially, are really nice because it means that when a corner is unoriented on the bottom, it doesn't matter what location on the bottom it is relative to whatever's on the top because you can always turn the two layers relative to each other so that they match what you want. So the number of cases actually doesn't grow exponentially like you might expect it would. So yeah, AUFs, that's the main thing. The second thing was um, I realized so many methods relied on sledgehammers and hedge slammers and Sure, those are really fast, but I thought that was kind of boring. <sighs> and the fact that certain algorithms would take 3 or 4 or 5 sledges, that's 12, 16, and 20 moves, that's more than God's number for skew. So I thought, maybe there's a way to use completely arbitrary moves and get a move count that's much lower than 16 or 20. Now I realize these are much less finger ergonomic moves, but you know, I was just trying to have fun, and back then skews didn't turn that well either. And I have to say that a lot of the six movers are actually really fluid too, so I don't think it's too much of a downside. And I'm really pleased that half of the algorithms are eight moves or fewer, which means that if you can solve the first half in an average of five moves, or six, which I think is reasonable, and then do last layer in eight, and include an AUF in there somewhere, that's around 15 moves on average, which is pretty low. So I'm happy with that. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I'm glad I finally that's documented this method, so in case I forget it in the future, there's something out there to archive it forever. I guess I'll see you next time then, and goodbye! Ah, damn. Oh. This is 4.92 average of 12, although it had two, two skips. Don't care.